Hello. I won't say your last name, but I'm just going to say it. What's going on? How you doing? <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. Hello, hello. Hey, you are looking dapper and uh, delicious. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. So tonight you're going to help our audience get their ass off the fence right get off the fence all right <laughs> come on baby Ooh, you know so many people have misnomers when it comes to home buying or home selling and sometimes we just don't know what we don't know right that's one of my one of my favorite statements you don't know what you don't know come on i'm listening all right so 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 you've been in and it's, it's kind of crazy your story is kind of ironic and um it's one of those unique stories where we use adversity or some form and we use that to catapult our lives into something cat i call it stratospheric <laughs> that, that's your that's your story right so let's talk a little bit about your story before we get into secrets and recipes you got into real estate how oh that's a oh that's a you know this you know this is gonna be good right hey let's i'm a crusader it. for the people i'm a crusader for the people that's just that's just my passion that's my heart let me tell you what happened so I was buying a property with my sister over in Atlanta because, you know, we're trying to be investors. California, we think 375 is cheap because we're in California. Right. I done bought a property in Atlanta upside down. Uh, I think it was uh, $100,000. I didn't realize it was I was upside down $100,000 until after we done. The ink is dry. I'm driving into the community. I didn't take myself out of Cali and fly to Atlanta to see what was going on. I just got signed the papers. We, we good. I get out there, I'm driving in the neighborhood. And as I drive, I see a sign that says buy houses for 250,000. Uh, I didn't buy mine for 375. <laughs> How is that possible? So I ended up talking to one of the homeowners that was mowing his grass and he let me know what the, what the housing prices were. And at that point I was on fire. I contacted the police department. They're like, ma'am, we can't help you with that. And I said, well, who can help me? They said, well, you're going to have to contact the FBI. And I ain't never contacted the FBI. <laughs> like this day. So I contacted them and they let me know there was 25 people that was a part of this sting operation. The loan officer, the appraiser, and the real estate agent were all in cahoots. Well, at that point, I decided that I was going to get my license because we as a people, going back to your comment, my favorite thing I always say, you don't know what you don't know. And at that point, I became a crusader for the people. And it's been my mission ever since. So you got took. I got took for 100 grand. But you know what? It catapulted me into the, in the industry so that I can become a teacher so that I can help other people like myself, because I didn't even know. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, I was afraid when I bought my first house. I didn't want to read the paperwork. I give it to my husband. I was married at the time. Give it to him. Let him read it because it was so intimidating. It was like this big, you know, scariness. So mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. What, what do you think causes fear with people? Because there's a lot of people right now that's thinking about buying a home um, mm -hmm. and some of them have no money. <laughs> and, and some are just intimidated by the whole process because it seems so overwhelming. What would you say to them right now? To be honest with you, it's intimidating because the words are not familiar, mm -hmm. which is why I love to use my platform to break things down in a very short, simplistic way. And I'll explain it, you know, quickly in a shorter way, in a way that we can understand. So the, the reason why we're in fear is because we don't understand the language. But when you have a crusader out there who's going to teach you how to re understand the language and break it down in its simplest form for you, honey, it's math in its simplest form. I got you covered. Okay. When you have someone out there crusading for you and breaking it down for you becomes unintimidating and becomes simple. Right. So what you need to do is align yourself with a real estate agent that is going to be there to walk you through the process, not just put you in a house. So so how was how would you suggest one find such a crusader? Honey, these days, you know, Instagram, Facebook, that show that show little but that right there is your your marketing. So go onto their website or onto their pages and find out what they talk about. If they're showing houses with I just listed this, I just listed that. Excuse my French. But who cares? And I ain't gonna cuss, but I almost wanted to anyway. Oh, this is an cares? adult show. You can cuss on here. <laughs> well, like, who, well, what I was gonna say is, who gives a shit? I don't care what you got listed. What I want to know as a consumer, what do I need to know, right? Uh -huh. 
So you want to find an agent that is breaking things down and teaching you through the process, not just telling you what they're selling, because that's a marketing campaign for self, not for uh, for the people. OK, so so we, we have to look at what they're posting and not necessarily the, the quantity of, oh, I did this house for this celebrity and this house for this person and all these figures and numbers that they, they spew out at us. But we got to look at if they had if it's just a marketing thing or if they have the compassion like someone like yourself. Correct. Well, let I me mean, finish. Think about it. If they sold a house to a celebrity of what value is that to you as a consumer? True. None. I, have, I don't I don't care if you are a celebrity or just a regular everyday person. My purpose and my passion is to teach you. So I want my my consumer to go find an agent that's going to help them with that. Now, I'm going to go to your other question you asked me, which was how does a person find out about financing right now? FHA is changing their loan limits for conventional. There's a ton of 100 percent percent financing programs out there. There's one in particular that I love. It is a VA loan, as I call it, for the consumer. Okay. And not everybody went to the military, but everybody can be a consumer of the VA loan. So there's two. One is uh, Fidelity, um, I was going to say Fidelity, uh, Navy Federal. They have a program that's 100% financing out there. Um, and then there's one other one, the name is slipping my mind right at the second. We, we can touch back on that later. Um, but there's programs out there that offer USDA. That's what it is. It is the USDA loan program. And that you can find in any state in the world, in the United States. Let me be clear about that. In the US, that used to be um, agricultural. If it was once agricultural, like places in Texas, places in California, that used to be agricultural. They do USDA loans and it's 100 percent financing. But anyway, what's your other question? USDA, that's like the, the beef. It's like meat, that, baby. <laughs> We're going to put a stamp on it. They certify <laughs> meat and stuff, huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I mean, hence the, the reason why it has to once have been agricultural. So. USDA. OK, mm -hmm. so, so for for people who are, for lack of better terms, consider themselves novices when it comes to real estate knowledge. Mm -hmm. Some people might even say I'm ignorant, you know, but how do they begin the process of learning the things that they'll need to know to get started? Really, the basic place to start. Honestly, a lot of people want to start with a real estate agent, but before you get to the realtor, you need to understand your finances, man. See, this is, you done delve into a whole nother topic. Wait, wait, about a minute, wait a minute. You, you <laughs> saying you got to understand the money you have, the money you need or the money you all need to have. All oh. of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you got to understand where you are financially. Do you have money for a down payment? What's your debt to income ratio? How do you calculate that? I did a little video on that. We'll talk about that later. But you want to understand all of those basics. And if that feels intimidating for you, just start with a loan officer. Give them all your numbers and then they'll break it down and let you know whether or not what you can qualify for. That's the first place is understanding what you qualify for. OK, so what's the least a person can make? <laughs> To, to, to buy a home. <laughs> now, you know, that's relative right now. If you're in California and you tell me you're making 60,000, I'm going to be like, well, what part of the country would you like to live in? The country is in way out there. Um, but, you know, the, it depends on where you live. If you're in the middle states, 30 to, to 60,000, you'll probably be OK. If you're in California, you're going to probably need to make 115,000, honestly, anywhere you know, I'd probably say 80 to 115,000, depending on where you are. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got some questions in the audience. Uh, people, if you have questions, just uh, write them in the chat. We can see them and uh, we'll, we'll ask them. Uh, Mark has a question here. First question. What about the upcoming crash as it relates to real estate? That's his first question. Well, thank you, Mark, for asking that question. Let me tell you right now with The Economist, the way that things are looking, we're not talking about people that are in the business and are speculating when the crash is going to come. I'm talking about people that this is what they do every day. Um, they're projecting that over in 2021, loan limits are changing. And because they're changing, housing prices will continue to uh, increase. What I mean by the change is happening, FHA is changing the loan limits for conventional. They're going up probably another 60 to $100,000 that they're allowing people to uh, borrow against. And with that being the case, the market is going to continue to rise. So when the crash is going to happen, nobody really knows, because as of now, we're all having to get qualified based upon actual numbers, not back in the day when it was all speculative. Right. 
Yeah, that was like in two thousand what eight when when it crashed the first time. Uh, two thousand six, going into two thousand eight. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mark has another question. Forbearances coming due, uh, and a lot of foreclosures coming. I guess is that a question or a statement, Mark? I guess he's asking about that. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. So I did a video on this too. Um, Mark, I don't know if you follow my page or not, honey, but you might want to follow because we don't talk about this already. <laughs> so <laughs> when it comes to forbearance, if you put your house in forbearance, um, interest rates are low and people are wanting to refinance, right? In order for you to do that, you have to bring your house current and then refinance. But for those of you that cannot bring your house current, let me tell you what they're doing. Let me tell you what they're doing. If you're in forbearance, you can take that forbearance and put it on the back end of the loan with the bank and then start the payment as if you never missed a payment at all. Because I was about to say, you know, if, if you could bring it, bring it current, <laughs> you would need some of that extra stuff. It, it's almost equivalent to when creditors say, well, hey, listen, if you can pay a thousand dollars a day, be like, sir, if I could pay a thousand dollars a day, I wouldn't be on the phone with you right now. So this is true. But some people, I'll be honest with you, they put their house in forbearance because they didn't know what, what it was going to look like. So they did that as like, let me preserve myself, so to speak, and let me see what's going to happen with the market. And then I can come back and bring it current and then go from there. Some people did that. Some people brought the houses not current, but are um, put the loan on the back end, the, the balance that was mm. unpaid threw it on the back end and now they're, you know, making their payments now and moving forward. Uh, but to answer his other question is for those people that didn't make those payments, people are speculating that they're going to go into foreclosure. But if you heard what I just said, the bank is allowing you to take those payments that were unpaid, even if it's like 15,000, 20,000 and putting it on the back end, those people are not going to go into foreclosure. They're going to just make the payments starting from that next pay. You know, if it's due in December, they'll start from December as if they never missed. Oh, OK. That's good. That's good information for people to know. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else. Oh, there's a comment. You're so right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know who who's right. Uh, Miss Relevant, who's right? I don't know. I don't know what he's saying, but I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know either. So, yeah. so when it comes to in today's market, are we looking at a seller's market or a buyer's market right now? Well, you know, this is a hard, I have never, and I've said this to my clients before, I've never seen a market like this. You know why? Because it's a buyer's market because interest rates are so low where they're giving money away, but it's a seller's market because they are giving money away. There's a ton of buyers on the market at the same time. And there's the inventory is super low. Let me give you an example. I live in uh, Mountain House, California. There are five homes on the market. We are a ton of new construction. Of the no, new construction that's here, there's only 40 homes under new construction. 400 people are pre-qualified for those 40 homes, which 400? means 400, which means those 400 people are looking at those five houses that are on the market here. So we're seeing anywhere from 10 to 20 offers on one house. Wow. I have, an, I have to tell you this little quick story. Go ahead. I, I had a client call me that was following my Facebook page and they were like, hey, Nico, we're thinking about selling our house. We had someone contact us. It was here in Mountain House. I said, OK. They said, well, we're looking at selling it to them for six hundred thousand. I said, mm, you might want to see what the market will bear before you do that. So they did. We listed the house. This is last week, actually. So we listed the house. I sold it for seven hundred and twenty thousand. They bought it one year ago for five hundred and eighty four thousand dollars. Mm. That's what the market is doing right now. Okay. Yeah, that's it's insane. Popping. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, you sound like the crusader everybody needs to have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a passion for people because I don't want to just put people in homes. I want to see them thrive and succeed. I want us all to win. I'm a win regardless. But if I'm a win, I want to take people with me. Come on, we all going. So that's so just the way that's my heart. For people. You, you got the all I do is win theme song in your, in your background, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all you do is win no matter what, huh? We're going to sing the song, but we're going to sing it together. You don't want me singing with you. <laughs> you don't want me singing either. I'm singing good in the shower. I'm the shower. I, 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 I'll mess up your prettiness right now with my singing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you, you got a couple of secrets here and you have some unique names for them. One is called the, the roll up. Let's let's talk about the roll up. What's the roll up? So I have a program that I created called the budget blueprint. The budget blueprint is focused around. Again, remember, 
as a crusader for the people, I don't want you to just get into a house. I want you to have your financial house in order. So we're talking about the house for your family. We're talking about your financial house, your resident, your real estate house and your, your life insurance. But with that, I created a program called the budget blueprint where I help people get out of debt using their own money. And then with what I teach you is called the, the roll up. And so I'm basically taking all the debt that you have and we're going to pay one off and we're going to roll that debt, that, that debt payment you were making up to the next product to the next, not the next product, but to the next credit card debt or whatever debt it is that we're rolling up. So I teach that in my budget blueprint. Budget blueprint, the roll up, like a fruit roll up or. No, Did honey. Well, it's like the debt snowball. <laughs> the debt snowball is what we're doing. And so basically, let's just say you have three credit cards. Mm -hmm. And on those three credit cards, you have different payments. We're going to start with the smallest payment that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, now we got to talk about keep making the cuts before we get over to that comment, <laughs> though. <laughs> and there's so many things I want to share with them all at once tonight. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to take the money from making the cuts. And we're going to put it over and paying the debt off. And let's just say we had three uh, credit cards. We're going to start with the, mall, the smallest payment and we're going to just pay that off. Once we pay that off, we're going to take that payment, both payments on the next debt, pay it and we're going to roll it all in. And eventually it's going to been, turn into this big snowball and we pay our debt off quickly. quickly. So. Okay. All right. So Mark has, he said on crash, he was talking of, he was asking more regarding investment opportunities. I knew what you was asking me, Mark. And my answer is still the same. <laughs> <laughs> With that old same, I said what I said. If you I said what I said now. That don't just because, just because um, people weren't paying their debt or paying their mortgages doesn't mean they're going to go into foreclosure. The bank at this point, they don't want people to go into foreclosure because they don't want to be holding those notes. Right. So they're making those adjustments by putting it on the back end. Now, they're the best, you know, some people are going to go into foreclosure, but a good portion of them, they're going to figure it out. All right. So so spike your FICO. Now, I had another okay. course I, I was going to ask you okay. regarding the roll up thing um, mm -hmm. for people who have debt mm -hmm. and in this state i mean here in california i'm not sure about your area but i live in los angeles mm -hmm. okay i don't live in los angeles but <laughs> you live on the outskirts i got you yeah yeah but we're our city is reshutting down you know it's mm -hmm. like we had a curfew instituted last week just yesterday we can't eat at the restaurants no more even outside right. so when people are looking at the debt they have right now and mm -hmm. they're looking at the income that they don't have. How do they manage to clear that debt when the income to debt ratio is not matching to be able to do so today, right now? Well, we got to start with making the cuts. Making the oh. cuts, like we're going to make some cuts, honey. Well, we could. <laughs> we're cutting. We're cutting. Uh, so one of the, my favorite things to cut first and foremost is cable. A lot of us are paying, high, even though we're quarantined, I don't even have cable. Let me just start right there. I don't either. First of all, we don't even have time to watch cable. All right. <laughs> but one of the first things you can cut immediately out of your budget is cable and go over to Netflix. Netflix is probably anywhere from 12 to $19 a month. That's $180 saving. One of my other favorite is cutting that cell phone bill all the way down. Chop it, baby. Let's just chop do it. That? Let me tell you this. I was paying $160 a month with Verizon. I, okay. You know, I love me some Verizon. I was grandfathered in. That's how that's how original I was. OK, <laughs> but I was paying $160 a month for myself and my son. All right. And so I went from them over to Comcast. You heard me. Comcast. $45 a month, unlimited nights, weekends, data, all of it. But let me tell you the little tip that you don't know. Huh. Verizon Wireless is on the Comcast Tower. Oh. So you pay in Verizon when all you can do, is, what you can do is cut them and go right on over to Comcast for $45 a month. And you just, I saved, I went for, so me and my son went from paying $45 for me. I paid $20 for him. That's 65 bucks. I save myself $95 a month. I can take that $95 if I had debt and go use it towards pay debt repayment. So we're going to be making the cuts. You see what I'm saying? Comcast, huh? Mm hmm Now, is it, is it, are they in my area too? <laughs> Comcast is everywhere, honey. It's like American Express. Everywhere I you want. I didn't even know Comcast had cell phone service. 
Come on. You, you've been following me for a while. I'm about my tips and I'm telling you, wow. you talk to me today on Comcast. On my oh, cell phone. My goodness. I'm I calling. Had no problems. What time they close? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so that's the stuff that we want to do. We want to start looking at making adjustments. The other thing that we can do is in our car insurance. So. OK, yeah, I've, I've done that with car insurance. All right. So someone else has another question here. Do you right. mean out of the three credit cards, pay the minimum on two, but you are paying more on the third car until you finish and then you roll over into the next car? Is that Absolutely. What you Thank you for getting that. Absolutely. So let's let me take that a little step further. And the answer to your question is yes. But what we want to do is the money where we're talking about right now, making the cuts from the cell phone and cable. We're going to take those things where we were paying the cable and the Comcast and all that stuff. We're going to add that to the minimum payment of the lowest card. So if we were making a twenty five dollar payment, we're going to take everything from making the cuts and add it to that twenty five dollars and start paying our credit card off sooner. Did so you follow much, that? I followed that. Okay. You have a wealth of information. I, sure. I got to do a show with just you. <laughs> and, and we just, we talk about a, a variety of things because, you know, it's, it's so much I think people need, mm -hmm. but you only have so much time to share it with them. You know, I know. Well, yeah, and we, and we out of time right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I love it. Yeah. Uh, so so how can people connect with you online if they want to uh, utilize your services? My name, Himako Siddiqui. You can find my website. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Just Google me. I'm out there. You'll find me. Just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out there. You, you can even find me on Yelp. OK, I'm just saying. Himako okay. Siddiqui. I'm in. You got I good Yelp reviews. Huh? You got good Yelp reviews. I got some good. You know what? I didn't even start the Yelp reviews. My people that use my services did. And that's how I found I actually had a Yelp page. Get out of here. Yeah. All right, guys. Miko Siddiqui, thank you so much for helping uh, our audience get their ass off the fence tonight. Uh, we're going to have to have you back again real, real soon. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right, guys. Coming up next, someone is here to help you in the peek through with some passive income. We got more off the fence with Finch when we return. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Now. Have the radio on the telly.